Good morning, all. Depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. So today, we're going to be having a look at the first ever non GX Placephalon. It's coming in unbroken bonds, and ladies and gentlemen, this is a very, very good Placephalon indeed. I like this. This is definitely going to see some play. Now, our translation does come from the lovely David Hockman over at LimitlessTCG.com slash translations. And if we start off with the basics here, we see 120 HP, which is actually kind of annoying because that means that the non-GX Buzzwall and Zoroark and 120 is a lot worse than 130. That makes us a little bit sad. Retreat cost of 2 is a little bit rubbish. Weakness to water is fine. Articuno is seeing play in a whole bunch of water decks, and that's going to one-hit KO you. But that's about the only real threat we're seeing here. But being a fire Pokemon is awesome. You're hitting weakness on Celebi and Venusaur. And although it's not actually out yet, in Unbroken Bonds we're going to have Buzzwall and Feromosa. And that's probably the best Pokemon in the Japanese format at the moment. So that's pretty good. It means you've got Heat Factory Prism Star to go ahead and do some extra drawing, which is nice. And you've got all kinds of things like the Incineroar we looked at the other day, which lets you do an extra 30 damage. Or Salazzle that we looked at the other day that lets you discard... Well, it's literally Heat Factory Prism Star, but as an ability. Or even just something like Welder, which allows you to attach two fire energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon and draw three cards. Fire is a good type to be right now. As for the first attack, the first attack here... I mean, it, it's all right. One fire energy, 10 damage, flip one of your face down prize cards face up. If it is a fire energy, this attack does 60 damage. And look, 60 damage is a decent amount of damage to be doing. There's a whole bunch of evolving Pokemon like Zorua, for instance, like Ralts. I mean, even something like Ditto Prism Star, which admittedly is 40, but it's still between 10 and 60. And you're going to be getting KOs on all of these. And this is a basic Pokemon for a single energy, which means this is a great attack, turn one going second. Your opponent has a turn. They haven't been able to evolve, but if they're playing evolution Pokemon, they've probably benched a bunch of evolution Pokemon or evolving Pokemon. And then you can hopefully get a one-hit KO here. Remember that even though we've got a bunch of evolving Pokemon which have got more than 60 HP, now that Professor Al's lecture is in the format, we're all being incentivized to go towards these evolving Pokemon with 60 HP or less. That works out well for Blacephalon. What's the problem? You've got to get a face-down prize card and turn it face up. Incidentally, in the expanded format, you wouldn't be able to use this with Town Map because Town Map turns your prize cards face up. It is not a face-down prize card at that stage, so you wouldn't be able to use it. It's inherently risky. It is a very risky attack. So I don't think I like it all that much. I do think if you're going second and your opponent's got a basic that they really want, let's say they've got one Zorua, I think it's worth a bit of a punt, and certainly what you need to do here is play something like an Ultra Ball, which you will be doing, any card that lets you search your deck, and then see how it goes. Have a look. If you've got free Fire Energy prize, there's a decent chance. If you've got no Fire Energy prized, maybe you don't use this attack. And I should also just clear up quickly, Jirachi, Prism Star, and Greedy Dice, both of which potentially give you an extra prize. Jirachi automatically Greedy Dice on a coin flip. If you pick them up as a face-down prize card, will not work with this because you turn it face up. So if you've got a Jirachi or a Greedy Dice prize and you turn it face up using Blacephalon, you've essentially made it a blank card that is just going to clog up your deck. So that would suck. But the real headline of this card is not the first attack, it's the second attack. Free fire energy, which is incidentally somewhat expensive. 50 damage, discard as many fire energy from your hand as you like. This attack does 50 damage for each card discarded in this way. Now this is actually kind of awkward, because you've got to have free energy on Blacephalon, but you're doing 
damage based on the amount of energy in your hand, and that's kind of annoying. It means in order to do 150 damage, you need free energy on Blacephalon, and you need free energy in your hand. So we've got this double whammy here of, you've got to get the energy in your hand, and you've got to get the energy on two Blacephalon. That's not the easiest thing ever. Now, energy in your hand actually got an awful lot easier in this set because of Fire Crystal. I did a video about it, link in the description. And Fire Crystal here is a phenomenal card that just lets you put free fire energy from your discard pile into your hand. Way better than stuff like Energy Recycle System, which is what you're left with if you're using energy that's not basic fire. And this really is your best option here, it just lets you pick up free fire energy. It's great. Don't sleep on Fisherman, mind you. Fisherman gets your four energy. Now, it is your supporter for the turn. But between Fisherman and Fire Crystal, I think you're probably going to be all right with this. Not to mention, if the energy is in your deck, you can go ahead and use Fiery Flint. And Fiery Flint lets you discard two cards from your hand and search your deck for four fire energy and put them into your hand. So with Fiery Flint searching your deck beautifully and Fire Crystal searching your discard, you're probably going to be okay. Yeah, you've got Fisherman and we've also got Lady Incidentally that lets you search your deck and put them in your hand. But generally speaking, I'm, I'm going to be looking here at Fiery Flint and Fire Crystal because they are item cards that get them out. So actually, getting the energy in your hand is not that difficult. How about getting the energy on Blacephalon? And actually, it's not that difficult. We have got Kiawe, admittedly. But Kiawe, you attach up to four energy and it ends your turn. And I don't know if you really want to use a Kiawe onto a Blacephalon. Kiawe onto a Reshiram GX, so that the GX attack does 180 damage and attaches five energy from your hand. Yes! Kiawe onto ho to do 180 damage. Yes! Kiawe onto Blacephalon. Eh... Not such a big fan there. But what about Welder? Welder's another one of these great fire cards that we are getting in Sun and Moon 10 Double Blaze, Unbroken Bonds over here. And Welder lets you attach two energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon and then draw three cards. So firstly, it lets you attach two of the free energy you need to Blacephalon, meaning that you attach two from your hand with Welder, one for your turn, boom, there's your free energy. But it also lets you draw free cards, which hopefully means that you will then draw into more energy to the Scar to do the damage. And that's what I'm thinking about here. We've also got Flareon GX, whose first attack does 30 damage for a single energy, bearing in mind you do have the Eevee from Sun and Moon, Attach a fire energy, immediately evolve. So going second, this is a turn one attack. Probably a better turn one attack than Blacephalon, if I'm honest. And then you get to attach free fire energy from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. So you can do two energy to one Blacephalon, one to another, and really start setting yourself up nicely here. Frankly, this is really, really good. I am a gigantic fan of this. And that's kind of the point of Blacephalon. Having to get free energy on Blacephalon is annoying. Having to get a whole bunch of energy into your hand is annoying. But when we combine that with all of these tricks that we've got, it actually becomes manageable. If this was on a fighting Pokemon, I'd be like, yeah, don't even bother. But on a fire Pokemon, this works. It's almost like these cards are themed. And actually, all of this discarding from your hand can work really nicely because we've got Flareon GX and Victini Prism Star. Both of them do 20 damage per basic energy in your discard pile. Admittedly, Victini is any energy, Flareon's just fire, but come on, it's going to be fire. And then Victini lets you shuffle it back into your deck, Flareon does not. So it's not even a bad thing to have the energy in your discard. Plus, remember that Fire Crystal can get the energy out of your discard. And if you really want to head into the expanded format, you've got Blacksmith, which attacks energy from your discard. And you've also got Max Elixir. So really, in the expanded format, getting free energy onto a basic Fire Pokemon, really not that difficult. It upsets me slightly that you need to get free energy on here. And that doesn't actually do any damage. But if we take a quick look at the damage here, this adds up quickly. Free energy, 150. Add a choice band, that's 180. Down goes Blacephalon. Or Rayquaza. And that's free energy, right? That's one fire crystal. 
Add a fourth energy, you're up to 200. And all of a sudden, you've got stuff like Buzzwall GX or Zoroark with either a Choice Band or a Shrine of Punishment will go down. And if you get five Fire Energy in your hand, that's a one-hit KO on something like a Pikachu and Zekrom. Five Fire Energy and a Choice Band will literally KO anything except for Magikarp and Waylord Tag Team GX. So make no mistake about it. The reason why we're mucking about trying to get free energy on there and trying to get all the energy into our hand is because you can get a one-hit KO on literally anything with a single prize Pokemon. This is going to see play. Even if it's just teched into the odd fire deck, we've got so many tricks for getting energy onto our Pokemon and so many tricks for getting energy into our hand that it really is not that difficult. And oh my goodness, can this be good. If you can get this out and get a one-hit KO on a Tag Team GX for free prizes, that is absolutely going to tilt the game in your favor. And if you're playing anything like Welder, like Flareon GX, etc., there's almost no excuse not to at least give this a go. So I'm giving it four wassies. I think this is going to be teched into a whole bunch of fire decks, and I frankly think this is a very, very good card. But I would like to know what you think about this card, so please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! But please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wassy Plays, where we look at Transformers and Keyforge and any other games that take our fancy. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.